Hello, I hope that you had as good of a holiday period as I did. I've been away for most of the last couple of weeks, so I wasn't able to get a huge amount done on Jogglebot recently, but I've still got some pretty exciting updates for you. Since my last video, I've gotten a lot of feedback and suggestions on what I can do differently with Jogglebot to fix some of the problems that I've got. And one of these problems fixed something that I've been scratching my head over for quite a while, and that was the problem of not being able to rotate properly. So previously when I was trying to rotate Jogglebot, it would translate as well. So it would like move side to side instead of just rotating purely just rotating. And I could not figure out what was going on with this. I was just staring at it for way too long and I couldn't figure out what was happening. But a very astute viewer who goes by the handle of hooks2998 figured it out. They saw in the video that I had posted where I had the, like the real life footage versus the simulation, they could see that something was wrong and they inferred what the problem could have been and they were actually correct. And what that problem ended up being is that I had just gotten the position of all of the legs wrong. So rather than being in one orientation, they were all just rotated around by one position, which threw everything out of whack. Thankfully, once this problem had been identified, it was super easy to fix and it required only changing six characters of code on two lines and the problem's gone. And now, Jugglebot can rotate perfectly and have no invoked translation, which is very nice. I, for one, think that the pure rotation movements are very, very satisfying. And I, I really like just watching it rotate back and forth. Thanks heaps to Hooks for suggesting that this could have been the problem. I think this would have taken me a while to find and I am really, really thankful for your, your powers of observation. <laughs> I'm very impressed that you found that. The next big suggestion that I think is worth mentioning came from Mail Dawn. And that suggestion was to use a linear bearing instead of this mechanism that I've got at the top of the legs to hold the legs while they move in and out. And I'd actually thought of this a while ago, but I sort of discounted the idea because my experience with linear bearings is that they need pretty fine tolerances to slide properly. And if the tolerance is not quite right, then the rods will either have a lot of friction as they move in and out or just not fit at all, or they will be a little bit wobbly if they're not quite big enough. And I was concerned about this because these carbon fiber rods that I'm using in the legs are not designed with that sort of precision in mind. But Maildorn's suggestion made me reconsider the idea. And so I bought a linear bearing online and gave it a go. And unfortunately, my fears were, I think, well founded because there is a fair bit of wobble in the linear bearing. I can't really get footage of the wobble in my current system because I don't have any clamps that are capable of holding the legs. And I can't think of a good way to show that. But you'll have to take my word that there is a lot less wobble in the current system that I've got compared to the new linear bearings. It's not a huge amount and the linear motion in the bearings is a lot smoother than my current system. However, I don't think it's worth redesigning what I have right now to move to a system that has more uncertainty in it. I think if I've got problems with these legs being too bulky or too heavy or too expensive or anything like that, then I will consider going back to linear bearings. But I think for now, I'm gonna stick with what I've got. But I'm really, really thankful for Maildon for suggesting that because I'm glad that I tested that out. It was a useful experience. Now I have a bearing as well in case I need to test other things in the future. There were a couple other suggestions that people had for applications of Jogglebot. Someone suggested that this could be used for batting practice for like baseball or cricket or something where it can just throw the ball straight up. And if there was some way to retrieve the ball and collect it again for the next throw, you could just have it throw repeatedly over and over and over again for hours. And you, would, you could just stand there and whack away. So if you have any other thoughts of what something like this could be used for, I would love to know. So now onto the exciting updates. The first of these is that I have redesigned the way that the legs are extended and contracted. Briefly, the old mechanism had a string pull the leg out to extend the leg, and then some springs acted to pull the leg back down again. And this design worked quite well, but there were a couple of big problems with it. The main one being that this, the springs were not strong enough to pull the legs fast enough when the system was moving really quickly. So what would happen is if things started moving really, really fast, the leg contracting wouldn't be able to keep up with the motor. And so there'd be a lot of like really jaggedy motions when it finally did catch up. And I don't really want that to happen. And I, I would like the system to be very agile and precise and always in control. Uh, so I wanted to change that. The other main problem with this is that the current springs are quite noisy when Jogglebot is moving around. 
and it would be nice to not have that noise. I actually mentioned the idea of my solution for this in the previous video, but now I've actually finally designed it. And the way that that works is to have strings pull in both directions so that when the motor turns in one direction, it will extend the leg. And when the motor turns in the other direction, it will contract the leg. This mechanism I think is a lot better than the current one because it will make sure that the motor is always in direct contact with the position of the legs. Something that is critical for this design to work is that the strings are taut at all time. If they are loose, then backlash will enter the system and the motor will be able to move without the leg doing anything. It'll just sit there. And that's really not ideal. I want the position of the leg to be as closely tied to the rotation of the motor as it possibly can be. So what I've done is I've made a mechanism that allows me to change the tension of the strings. And this way I can put everything in place, tie the knots approximately correctly, tension it up, and then it should be good to go. This doesn't address the fact that as the leg moves around, the tubes get bent, and that slightly changes the length of the string inside the tube. But to be honest, I don't think this will be a problem because the legs don't move by that much and the tubes are quite free to move around. So they shouldn't really be kinked or bent too tightly. So I think that problem should be fine. If I do have problems with this later on, then I'll probably add a spring or something in there to just make sure that the string is tight all the time but I think this should work for now. You might be wondering why I haven't already printed the parts out and tested this idea. And the reason is because I have recently ordered some new brushless DC motors that are going to replace these stepper motors and be better than them in pretty much every way. Uh, so I've designed the new system to suit those new motors, but UPS lost my package. And so now I am waiting one month later and I'm trying to correspond with O drive to get something sent out. Hopefully that happens soon, but we will see. I could set it up to use the current stepper motors that I have right now, but I'm not too keen to print a bunch of parts that I know I will be throwing out pretty soon anyway. I am just gonna wait a little while and work on some other things in the meantime, and then hopefully the motors arrive soon and I can actually test this mechanism properly. Thankfully, this new design only really affects things when Jogglebot's moving really, really quickly. So I don't think I should run into that roadblock anytime super soon. This brings me to the second major update that I have for you, which is a simulation that I've been making to help with predicting the path of the ball while it's being tracked in the air. The point of this simulation is to let me test different algorithms to predict where the ball will end up based on noisy sensor data. I haven't yet done the actual ball tracking itself. I'm going to get to that a little bit later. I need to learn a couple things first before I get fully into that. So I'm sort of putting that off for a little while, but eventually I will have depth cameras that will track the position of the balls and I'm expecting there to be a reasonable amount of noise in that data. I am not under any illusion that that data is going to be nice and clean and the ball will be exactly here and exactly here and exactly here and so on. That's not going to happen. So what I'm doing is I'm making a simulation that will plot an ideal path and then for every single data point in that path it adds a little bit of noise to that data. Then I send this noisy data to each of the algorithms that I'm testing and they need to predict where the ball will end up based on all the data points that they've received so far. Right now I'm testing two algorithms. One is a moving average filter and another one is a Kalman filter. And I'm sort of pitting these against each other to see which one is the most accurate in the widest set of conditions. The conditions that I'm changing in this simulation are the frame rate, which is how quickly data points are being taken, as well as the amount of noise in the data. Right now, I don't actually know how much noise is going to be in the tracking data from the depth cameras, but I can put in any value that I want. So I can test these algorithms with like 10 meters of noise on every single data point, and I can still see how they perform. From the testing that I've done so far, I am very impressed with how well the Kalman filter is performing. I haven't used Kalman filters before, so I wasn't really sure what to expect, but it is really good at identifying where the ball is going to end up after even just a couple of data points. And this is really handy because it means that I can move Jugglebot to more or less the correct spot with plenty of warning in advance. So I expect that the Kalman filter is probably what I'm going to end up using. And this is the main reason why I'm only actually testing two algorithms right now, because the Kalman filter just went really, really well. And so I'm not really spending too much time looking at other, other options. If you know of any other algorithms that might be helpful with this process, then please let me know because I am in a really great stage right now to test a whole bunch of different ideas before implementing them properly on Jugglebot. 
The next major step with this process is to hook up the depth camera to this algorithm so that I can track the balls in real time and predict where they will end up in advance. One unresolved question that I've got for the next little while is where to actually position the camera. Currently I have three ideas, the first of which is to put the camera on a tripod off to the side. This would be good because I think it would give the clearest view of the ball's entire path, but it would be a bit tricky because it means that I would need to do an additional step of figuring out where the camera is relative to Jugglebot, and I'm not too sure how that would work. I, would, I think that would be a bit of a process. The second idea that I've got is to put the camera down the very bottom, staring upwards. I think that would be a really compact and elegant spot to put it, but I think there's so much stuff between the very bottom at the base and where the ball is moving that the path of the ball will be blocked and I wouldn't be able to get very nice clean data out from that. The third idea is sort of in between these and that is to mount the camera off to the side fixed to Jogglebot and have it be pointing upwards a little bit. This would mean that I would know the exact location of the camera. I don't need to calculate that every time I set it up and it should give a clear view of all of the balls with nothing in between. I think that this will work the best, but I'm gonna to have to have a bit of a play around with getting the angles right to make sure that it can see the ball even when it's being thrown up quite high. If you have any thoughts about where I could put the camera and what might be best for this, then please let me know. That's about everything that's happened with Jugglebot since my last video. I, for one, am very excited with where this project is going and I am very happy to know that it's closer than ever to being able to juggle a ball. I think this is super exciting. As always, I hope you found this interesting, and if you have any questions or thoughts on any of this, then please let me know in the comments below. Till the next one, have a good one.